This episode of the Helping Healing Humor podcast is brought to you by Ministering to Youth Conference. Imagine for a moment that you are surrounded by mountains next to a peaceful stream in the cool air of the fall. It's hard to imagine a better place. But what if that place was filled with other people who had the same mission that you do? People focused on helping the youth of today live out their faith in Christ. That place is M2Y, the Ministering to Youth Conference, located at the Mainstay Suites in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, on November 4th through the 7th. You will be surrounded by youth ministers, elders, deacons, preachers, youth volunteers, and parents that all have a common goal, ministering to youth. This year, the theme is Renew. The keynote speakers are Dan Chambers and Spencer Furby, along with several other class teachers who will be tackling subjects on mental health, technology, self-care, navigating culture, and so much more. Go to m2yconference.com to register or benandtravis.com backslash m2y for more information. Travis and I hope to see you there. Welcome into the Helping Healing Humor podcast with Ben and Travis. We are back for part two of our interview with Kenya Hayes, and she's not giving us a whole lot of dirt on you, Ben, just yet. So you got to be doing pretty good, right? That's exactly right. There's, are you saying that there's dirt on me? <laughs> of course you not. Of that course not. Dirt on me? Come on. Just don't want to make him look bad on his own show. It's, it's, it's just if there is dirt, she knows it. And uh, we're not leaving until we, as a little bit of a teaser, get some stories about Ben Hayes trying to coach Kenya. We're not leaving. So go ahead and get that story tuned up because I'm ready. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're talking a little bit coach about. A better athlete than you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, I mean, she's the best athlete on the podcast right now. I mean, it's, it's right. not even close. Um, but last episode, we opened up a little bit about y'all's story about your youngest son, Cypress, and his um, battle with, call it, what, spitzoid melanoma. Yeah. Is that correct? Wow. I never remember anything. So that's, that's impressive. pretty impressive. Um, and kind of going through that process of getting it removed from his face and getting to St. Jude and kind of going through that process. I, I'm interested to know, because I mean, it's a traumatic thing for adults who really kind of understand what's going on. I'm interested to see maybe how much you felt like Cyprus understood what was going on, maybe how he communicated and dealt with it, and then how much you guys let him in on things and how you let him in on things. Because, man, that's got to be difficult. I know that with my own story, you know, there was parts of it I didn't want to know, and I was glad I didn't know, you know. Yeah. And so to strike that balance with a kid so young, I think you said he was like nine months old, which, yeah. I mean, that limits the communication anyways. But, you know, how did you guys handle that? Oh, uh, the after has been more with him. You know, we've, we've had conversations with him after cause he has to go for checkups and he doesn't always know. And so it's kind of been interesting to see him grow, kind of grow up at St. Jude almost because when we go, it's like he remembers it, but each time he's a little bit more mature about it, you know, and the, the first thing he hated beyond anything and which is funny because i hated them too i still hate them even i'm an yep. adult is a blood pressure cuff like blood pressure cuffs are just the weirdest thing to me <laughs> you know like that squeeze they put on your arm and it's right on that nerve well they would always you know do that with him and he would just completely freak out yeah. that was the one and thing they would do it try it on his leg and it didn't still... matter and they never could get it they were always like we can't get a blood pressure reading because he was so just go so crazy about it. And then, you know, when he finally kind of like settled down on that, that was, that was pretty cool. I guess the biggest thing was really helping the other kids understand it. You know, when we mm -hmm. first started going and they yeah. didn't, why are we having to do this? Well, and, Kenny, yeah. I'm interested, you know, because a lot of times as dads, and I know you're kind of this way too, you're, you're an athlete, you know, it's kind of suck it up buttercup. Hey, we got to, press on you know with my son it's like all right dude we gotta we gotta just be tough you know and i just wonder like from a mom standpoint it is different i, I find that would be so that would yeah. be so hard because i mean once again guys are we're kind of 
at least in our, when we grew up, Ben, and I think before us, maybe now people are a little more in tune with their feelings. But, you know, kids look to their mom. Mm -hmm. You know, how bad is it? How is mom reacting to it? And so I'm just kind of interested to know your balance and how you approach that, you know. And, and I think that follows over to the other kids and kind of answers what Ben's talking about. You know, you're feel, you got to be this person who's, you know, you're supportive emotionally, but you also have to kind of put on a strong face. And so how did you guys as a couple kind of deal with that? You know, it's like strong face, communicate with the kids, and then behind closed doors, not to get too much in your business. You know, how did you guys come together through that? Because there's a lot of couples who – it pushes them apart. I mean, I'm thankful that ours was not any more serious mm -hmm. than it was. And we have to, I mean, I have, I, I don't want anybody out there listening to it thinking that we think we had it on the same level that other people do. Uh, we would go up for a weekend at a time or, uh, you know, I'd say a weekend, but two or three days, you know, in the middle of the week and do our, our stuff. I guess the initial surgery was a little longer, you know, that sort of thing, but it was never, we were never really away from family. We would go up there, spend a couple of days, come home, go back for a checkup a few weeks later, come home. And so I guess we didn't face that as much as a lot of couples because we knew people who had surgery the same day who they didn't go home for that little girl didn't go home for nine months. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a yeah. whole different ballpark. I know that our the very first time that we went to St. Jude, um, I think that was the hardest because we didn't know what to expect. And once we got there, I was glad to be there. But at the same time, I was like, it was just such an emotional time. And it was it like came a big snow. It was like oh, the man. only snow that we had that year mm. and the kids like were I all was, here and we were up there i was full of guilt the whole time because you know here we are in this big snow that we've wanted and you know all winter and and now we're not there with the kids to enjoy it and, and we took cypress out in front of the bass pro shop and took some pictures of him in his snowsuit but he was young yeah, he no, didn't yeah. understand i think yeah. he was he was one he had already yeah. turned one. He had just turned one, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, he was one in December mm -hmm. when he had his first, first surgery. Time. And this was in February. February. Yeah, I think we had the – we did an initial uh, assessment up there in January, I think. And then right between Dallas CYC and reg the regular CYC mm -hmm. was the surgery. Because I remember – I went to Dallas and then we went to Memphis and then, you know, and a few, I, then, when then you he didn't had get it to right go. before. Yeah. You didn't get CYC. to go to the CYC in, in Pigeon Forge. So it was, uh, you know, it was in that kind of time frame, and that was tough, but to answer your question too, about dealing with him with it is, you know, we've just explained to him and we'll talk to him about his scar. And of course I'm going to be that guy, you know, me, his nickname was stitches for a long time because he had big <laughs> stitches down his face and um you know it, i got grief from that so whatever i'm <laughs> well, sure of course i'm sure people on the podcast will also give me that but the other day i said something about hey stitches and he goes that was my nickname <laughs> so yeah. he's still remembered it because i would just say that but you know he's still got a scar that runs down his face and it's uh not as noticeable if you get out in the sun you can see it sometimes and i don't think the story's completely done the the surgeons have talked about you know go ahead and doing like a plastic surgery to fix that yeah. at some point but it's not necessary man i i, I was gonna say i mean it's it's impressive to me you know considering and it, you know i don't know if you guys have pictures posted or whatever of when it first happened and you're thinking man that's gonna be you know that, oh, yeah. i'm sure there was some anxiety over Yes. Man, that's a big deal. I mean, that's a big deal. And, you know, now, unless you know, right, you wouldn't know. You know, yeah. I know that it's probably – you guys probably see it more than anybody, but being somebody who sees him every once in a while, you would have never guessed that he had something done on his face, you know. And so I guess that leads me to what you mentioned. You know, what about the other kids? You know, you've got 
you know, a lot of, some of them are really close to his age. Some of them were older. And so, you know, what was the difference there? You know, you probably had some per, you know, they probably rallied around him. I mean, he's not like that point where one of them, ah, he's get over his little kid. He's getting all the attention, but you know, how did you communicate it to them at the different levels? Cause you kind of got one at every level, you know? Uh, so how'd you communicate to the, to the siblings? Um, we, we were just honest with them. And, um, I mean, we didn't let on how, I mean, our fears, we didn't let them see that, but we let them know we were concerned and, um, and, you know, some of them were too young to really understand. And, you know, I, like that first visit there, it's like, when are you coming home? Are you going to get to play in the snow with us? And which just added to my guilt. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then but, like Stana went with us on several because she was not you know, in school I, yet. So if we would go up there, she would go up there with us. And so she kind of grew up going to yeah, St. Jude did. a little bit too, you know, um, so she sort of maybe even had some more understanding than some of the other ones because she was watching what they were doing to him and she was being little nurse mama too and helping, you know, kind of keep him occupied while we were up there. And so there was, she was a, a lot a part of it, but certainly yeah. it was different for the older ones too. But overall, I mean, they, I think they, they all, handled it well. And, yeah. I think it would have been different if we'd have been away for months at a time. Right. Or oh, yeah, for sure. And, I, and it would have been different for us had she had to be up there. But I think every time until here, until COVID, really, mm-hmm. COVID has not allowed us to both go up there. Uh, you only have one that can go. And so um, she's generally, she's not going to let me be the one. She's going to be the one to take her baby up there. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah. You know, when, when, before that, we always tried to go together. And like I said, it was usually a two day experience. We'd have a couple of doctor's appointments one day, a couple on the next. And so we'd go up there together. So I think that was always good. We always kind of had each other uh, and could bounce the ideas off of each other and and questions and whatever else. Thankful for you that it's not worse. uh, And we hope that it stays that way. Is there any advice that you'd give, you know, even as a counselor, Ben, or as a mom, Kenya? Uh, you know, which I think technically mom and counselor are kind of the same thing to a large degree, at least in my situation for somebody out there that's going through it, you know, ways in which you guys handled it really well. And then maybe ways that you didn't. I think, I think for me, the biggest thing was not to get ahead of yourself with anything. And I think I see that as a counselor, but I see it with, with things like this is it's so easy when you hear, like we said before, St. Jude, that you start, your mind starts taking you to all the worst case scenarios. Um, And I think we all do that with a lot of different things, but certainly with health concerns is there's a difference in preparing yourself or, or thinking about what can I do versus this is what it is. You know, we can certainly turn, a difficult time into a very dark hour very quickly um, by taking on too much at one time uh, or, or, or thinking about what it could be, because, you know, at the point where they said it, we don't know what that means, you know, and we've talked about, you know, the, the equation on here before a plus B equals C instead of, you know, what, what has happened equals my life. Uh, It's not really that it's what happens in the way I think about it equals it. So I could, I could sit there and 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 let all the worst case scenarios come into my brain uh, about what it's going to be. And that's only going to make matters worse. So I think when you get a diagnosis or you get a, a anything really in life that happens, I think you have to first sort of stop and realize what it is versus what it could be and not let the could be's take over. Does that kind of make sense? The evil could be. Yes. I mean, they just they have a tendency to, you know, really that's that whole, you know, don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow has enough concerns of its own. You know, like just, you know, don't get ahead of yourself too much on those things. We just we allow our minds to go way too much into the future when it's it's only going to rob us of today. Well, as a mom, I would 
say, and I, I heard this before. I mean, even before we had kids, um, you know, I had um, another mom tell me one time, she said, moms know best, you know, always trust your instinct. And, and that was the case with him. Um, Cause you know, even after the first doctor, you know, told me, Oh, well, it's this. And I just kind of accepted it just, but I still had that gut feeling that that wasn't right. And thankfully this other doctor brought it to my attention. And so, you know, now, I mean, if I have a question about something, I'm going to, if I don't like what one doctor or, you know, I'm not sure about what one doctor says, I'll just, I'll go to another one. Um, gotcha. And just follow your instinct. And then as far as like having younger kids and, and dealing with it, um, I think just be honest with them. Um, like we, we've always just tried to be honest with our kids about things that are going on and, and not try to hide things from them. I mean, not, you know, not in a, um, like where they can handle it on their level. Right. Give them what they can use, what they can handle and and can do. So, yeah. And I, the other thing I would say to people is that are going through it is let, don't be afraid to let people help you. Cause I mean, it really does. I think for me, it was a, it was somewhat of a, a pride thing like when they first started talking about what all they were going to do I was like you know I, I'm, I'm not as I'm not in the same scenario as these other people and even today still when they you know when they offer some of the vouchers and some of the different things that when you get there it's just kind of hard to take it you know but um, you know I've been told in that scenario and in others this is why it's there it's there for you so if you're one and especially you know, uh, if you're somebody who is going to St. Jude because of those doctor's appointments, you know, you've got a child that's sick. It's there. That's why the people are donating to these runs. I don't, I don't, Travis doesn't make any money. I don't make any money. The other people don't make any money off these things that we donate or that we do. In fact, you can donate straight through the app, uh, the St. Jude uh, app and or, or a website through our run page. And it doesn't go to us. I mean, I don't even see the money. I love it that way. It goes straight to St. Jude. And that's why people donate. That's why you donate out there is to help, you know, these families. Um, because a lot of them are going to struggle to pay their bills. We didn't have to do that. The Lord blessed us. We, we didn't have to live up there. Um, but there's a lot of people who have to live up there for six months or a year or for several years. And, you know, they may have somebody back at home working or they may not. And, you know, your your donations, anybody's donations towards St. Jude goes to help with gas money and food money and a lot of other things. So it's certainly money well spent when you donate it. Family devotional time, fulfilling, organized, fun. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts and press them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Moses' words in Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 8 to the children of Israel in the speech that closed out not only his ministry, but also his life can be overwhelming at times and make us as parents feel like we could be doing more to disciple our children. In the fast-paced life that we live, We're usually just happy if everyone makes it out the door with their shoes on the correct feet. Planning and executing a family devotional time can seem out of reach. We're here to help. The Helping Healing Humor podcast has a tool to help you plan, organize, and execute a fulfilling and fun family devotional time for every member of your family from toddler to teen. As a member of the Ben and Travis Patreon community, you will have access to tons of content at a small price that will help you grow your spiritual life disciple your family, or even lead a small group Bible study. Patreon membership fees will help our podcast continue to be better and support the cost of creating and publishing the content that our Helping Healing Humor community has enjoyed. Go to www.patreon.com backslash Ben and Travis to sign up. Hit the link in the show notes for this month's special offer. I, I would add, you know, not that it needs any addition, but celebrate the victories. You know, I mean... It is so easy, and sometimes I feel silly, 
you know, post stuff on Facebook or whatever that I've made it this far, this, that, that, but it's like, no, like that's kind of what that's for. Celebrate the victories. You know, you're here, you're breathing air, use the vouchers, you know, you're here, you're breathing air, celebrate, you know, that's what those things are for is to, you know, help alleviate some of the struggle and there are varying degrees of struggle. Um, but you know, whatever gets you to take that foot in front of the other, we hope that this podcast helps people do that. I don't know that we mentioned like, you know, when they did the, the second surgery that they actually, um, took some lymph nodes out just to make sure that it hadn't spread, um, into those. And when, you know, you're talking about not worrying about the future and just focusing on today, um, you know, I know that it's not very likely that this can come back, even though it can come back. But, you know, there's days I have to catch myself, you know, what if this comes back or like every little spot that comes up oh, on yeah. it? Um, you know, I'm just, you know, a little more paranoid about it. You know, just I'm more, more aware. Um, and I know at first, like it was like every little spot, like we would call St. Jude. Yeah. And that's another thing that's awesome about them is like, they're always available. Um, yeah. even for just something silly. And almost always it's not a, we'll call you back. It's let me get you to the right person. Yeah. They're, and they're like, they'll keep you on the line till you get that person. It's not, we'll call you back in you know, 48 hours or 72 hours or whatever. Sometimes they'll say, we'll call you back, but most of the yeah, time it's, it's been a couple of hours when they yeah, call they get on it. Yeah. Not 48. Awesome. So, you know, whatever. And uh, so, yeah, that, that was huge to just to be able to, you know, but I remember every time I'd see a spot, I'd, yeah. I'd start I still do it occasionally it, so, yeah. and I'll just keep an eye on it. And, Understandably. Yeah. Understandably. Um, you know, thankful for you guys sharing your story i'm glad to to learn a little bit more about it kenya have you got a good story you can tell on ben i mean have you got you know, know the story you want to hear yeah. Travis? i know the story i, I want to hear but right. she may you know i don't i probably interjected too much already so you know if she's got one that she'd rather share, I want to give her the opportunity. You share more than one, but certainly. And then I can tell the story I want to tell if she doesn't want to do it. She wants to skip the play by play. That's the worst Ben story you can tell. I don't know. I do like the one about. <laughs> so, so I, it was church league softball. For some reason, they asked me to coach, probably because they knew they wouldn't listen to me. Um, and I'm coaching third base and I don't remember. Did you hit it or were you I on first? No, I hit okay. it. Okay. Yeah. Of course. So she's, <laughs> she hits the ball and she's rounding third base, which tells you something about where she hit the ball. Also, also it makes it a little more understandable that that makes it a little more understandable. All right. Yeah. So go ahead. Yeah. So he's telling me to stop and, um, I knew, the sign. yeah. And I knew I could make it. So I just kept going <laughs> and I made it. I was safe. <laughs> just, just blew through the hold sign. At <laughs> he likes to give me a hard time, but my coach in high school always told me that, um, he trusted me. So if I could make, if I thought I could make it to do it, not to listen to him. And so if, I didn't have to listen to my Moscow coach then. I See, I, I remember this slow motion. Like, I feel like I was in the dugout. I don't know if I was helping you coach. I don't even know if I was there, but I'm pretty sure I was there. Uh -oh. And, um, you know, I just see Ben, he's giving it, he's giving it. He's, you know, he's got enthusiasm. I'm like, no, no, no. And she just. <laughs> I remember, I know, I think Sonny Owens was there because he, he gave me grief about it. <laughs> yeah. Too. No yeah. eye contact, no nothing. <laughs> so no, uh, and she scored. She was right. So, I mean, I I can't argue too much with that. But no, you no, know, no submitting to your husband on that play. <laughs> so <laughs> she just she just blows it out of the water. So you know, anyway, some of these guys that uh, are in the pros that keep getting thrown out this year uh, on really dumb plays that I've been watching the last couple of weeks i guess they you know they don't know as well as she does they she, don't know anything on kenya they ain't got but, nothing on kenya i will say also about kenya uh you never wanted to play her in flag football she she ran knees high uh you know and 
And if you ever, she, did. she always tells me she did not, but she did. She did. I mean, I don't think I'm you not, did. On, I don't think. Me. I'm not slowing down. I don't think it was on purpose. It's just how you were taught to run. You were an athlete. Any athlete who runs is going to run knees high, you know, especially. Not going to, you hear our excuse was you jumped in front of me. So I'm going to. You're I think Kenny is the reason why the flag football rule, the offense is supposed to avoid the defensive player if the offense has the ball, the offensive player has the ball. She's the meaning behind that rule. Uh, but I've, I've, I've dove in front of large men and not been as afraid <laughs> as trying to stop Kenny in a flag football game and like squaring her up and she's running. I mean, knees high and I've been probably trucked on many occasions. So, uh, that's awesome stuff. Good memory lane, uh, freed Hardeman days. And I am going to say this, and I'm sure you know this Kenya, but you know, Ben tried to set us up, right? Like, yeah. Uh, so yeah. I remember ben. that. <laughs> I uh, that yeah. story the other day to somebody. <laughs> I think we, so we could may have, have been, this could have been a whole different podcast. Yeah, it could have been. Could have been a whole different podcast, but you right. know, things things go the way they go. But man, I'm I'm it's we need to have you on some more Kenya. Maybe we just need legendary Kenya stories. You know, we didn't even get into the throw the basketball down the court and like land flat on your face. That's crazy. Uh, Video from high school, wasn't it? Yeah. She played oh. played for Freed Hardeman. There's some some days playing softball for Freed that were pretty uh, brutally cold, uh, to yeah. the point of a, a guy from Alaska sitting with us and talking about how cold it was. Nice. In, in, we had electric Tennessee. blankets in the yeah. dugout. It was so cold. So, so you have the throw the ball down the court in basketball and falling on your face. Ben has the sliding into. What base was that? You slid third, into third, third and third, you know. third, base. third base is the uh, is the 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 bad place for me apparently because I did a a, a nose dive. You scorpion kinged it. You just got the scorpion all legs the over, over the top, <laughs> face first, legs over, ankles overhead, like over the back. Braves fans out there, Dansby Swanson did that the other day at third base. He didn't really scorpion. He didn't get the technique as good as I did, but he did scuff his nose up on the uh, on the dirt coming into third base, and I got several messages about that going, hey, you've seen that before. So, yeah. Well, it takes talent, Ben. It takes yeah. talent, and you've you got it. Form. you got to get the legs. In you've the got it. To really get it. I got asked today about my most embarrassing moment, and it also came on the Freed Hardeman flag football field. When, you when my flag and my button got ripped completely off and my pants fell down to my ankles. I'm pretty sure you scored a touchdown. I still scored, team. yes. <laughs> I still scored because it's serious business. But Beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. Well, Kenya, thank you for putting up with us in our third grade elementary humor. But thank you for coming on and sharing your story about Cyprus and uh and, and sharing some practicality and, and encouraging those out there who may be going through the same. Thanks for being with us for this episode of the Helping Healing Humor podcast. Be sure to download our free ebook, 28 Days of Focused Living, at benandtravis.com and receive all of our helping healing and humor extra content directly in your inbox. Until next time, look for us at the same Ben and Travis time, same Ben and Travis channel.